Okay, continue. Okay. As what my title showed, um, I even cannot spell paleontology, let alone understand. So even me, I practice, I uh, prepare this um, presentation, I cannot say the paleontology frequently. So um, it is kind of like the, I want to make it as an attractive title uh, for my presentation today. And I start. Um, I will introduce myself uh, briefly, and it is kind of like uh, where my topics from. So I graduated with MAT so at American University, and now is a second year doctoral student at George Washington University. I am originally from China and have been living in DC for five years. Currently, I'm working with my research practice team to identify uh, any barriers and opportunities to engage the local community of adult Eng English language learners in the siting of the science museums, especially. Um, so we will discuss the following three main topics um, by talking about my dissertation topics and uh, taking two interactive activities. The first one is, to what extent do you think there exist barriers um, that adult English language learners get access to museums? And how can ESL instructors facilitate students' learning experience in museums? And also the last one is, are there any possibilities that current museum educational sources can be modified for the multilingual uh, visitors with different in English levels. Before we move to the main topics, I created a wonderful poll everywhere survey for my attendees just get to know um, their students demographic information and uh, their teaching practice in museums. But because um, we only have like, how many people? Oh, we have a lot. I, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't put the, the list. Um, so um, we will still use a poll everywhere application uh, to do the four brief questions. Um, I will, send the link to the um, chat how to okay I got it Cindy thank you um please see the link for the poll everywhere and uh, take about three minutes to type your answer and if you have a uh, problem to access this uh, survey, I just uh, type the, these four questions on the slide. So you can um, just um, think about it from the slide. And let me see whether the link works. Oh, the link works. Um, I will share the screen for the poll everywhere.
Okay, we still have uh, four people are on the way. We'll wait a few more minutes. I will wait uh, one more minute. While you are uh, finalizing your answer, I will first share my um, answers and my uh, story. Um, I was one ESO instructor teaching an entry-level course to the international students. Um, the course name is Life and Culture in DC. So my, uh, in, my students are the lower intermediate uh, English level, and they will learn and experience the life and culture of this um, US capital and gain a more profound and real understanding about the city through the readings, discussions, reflections, and uh, field trips in the DC. Um, so obviously they are all international students and there's a, uh, the fresh uh, freshman at the American University. Um, I've taken, because the field trips are the required, uh, the required activities in that um, curriculum, I've taken my class to the Capitol Hill and VOA and the Washington Mall for the field trips. Um, so basically it is kind of like the political or the history subjects, I guess. And uh, for me, I will say, um, even though I mixed the language skills and the actual knowledge um, in my field trips, uh, the priority for me is I want my students to learn the actual knowledge from the museums or from the, uh, the field of field trips. Um, so I just take, try to take my lesson plans or the tour guides more understandable for my lower intermediate uh, English level students um, to make them feel more comfortable to understand the actual knowledge from the museum. We'll see what we have so far for the poll everywhere. And take a few more minutes to share your answers, especially your teaching practice in the museums. Okay. Oh, so um, I can see most of us share the same students. Their um, English level are all the intermediate. And some of you teach the advanced the students with advanced uh, English level and the identities other than adult English language learners 
they are they are the multilingual learners from different countries like Japan, Africa, Peru, Iran, and um, they are also the bilingual learners. Um, Yeah, I I have the uh, specific purpose for this question. I will share. Uh, I will share with you in my uh, future activity. The next question is: Have you taken your class to the museum, and what should, what what subject? Um, we have the answer. In my previous teaching place, the uh, of African American Civil War Museum, history, art and high beginning ESO student to the American History Museum. That's interesting because um, I'm interested to hear um, the attendee who type in this answer like, uh, how do you feel your experience like taking the beginning, even though the high, but still the beginning ESO students to, to the mu museums? And also we have some answers like no, but would like to. Uh, I promise you after this session, you will be thinking about like the possibilities, uh, how like to take your students to the museums. Mm, the next is the last question is, okay, so we have um, answers that take language skills as priority more than actual language. That's interesting. Um, so is there anyone who, who wants to talk first about your answers? Sure, I'll, I'll talk about it. Um, I, I was the one who said that she had... Uh, yeah, hi, nice how are you? <laughs> um, I, when I was teaching uh, high beginners, both in the um, adult ed, um, program and then also in our IEP program. Um, several times I took students to the American History Museum. In our IEP program, um, that was a required uh, element of the program. They would do a, a field trip each semester. Um, in my adult ed, it was something we actually arranged and did outside of class together. Uh, because there were so many permission slips and things like that. And it wasn't part of the program, but it was something they were interested in doing. Um, and that was much more informal. With my IEPs, I uh, did a lot of preparation ahead of time. Um, at one time, Smithsonian Museums um, had uh, like curricula that they printed that you could download um, for different level students, um, American students. And um, I tried different ones. Um, I don't think that they do that anymore. Our last time I looked, <laughs> I wasn't able to see. But one of them was really interesting that it involved doing, taking a personality quiz. And then based on your personality, they gave you, matched you up with a, a kind of a tour, a guided tour and to, where you had to find certain things and answer questions. Uh, in the museum. And so we did a lot of vocabulary. We did a lot of prep. Um, and uh, I had very specific questions for the students to answer um, as, they, as they went around. And I was there, um, I had a, you know, a phone or I stood in a, a specific place if they needed help. And then um, when they came back, they usually had to do some kind of a, a writing or a, a presentation about what they did. So, um, and they, they always loved it and found it very fascinating. So 
you just touched my core um, topic for oh, this presentation. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I'm very glad to see that we have the similar feelings when we take students to uh, to the mu museums because I, I did do a lot of preparation for their uh, tours because as you said, um, like the Smithsonian museums, they prepared the very thoroughly sources for um, different groups like the families, uh, adults and teens, and also the thoroughly sources for uh, students, the K-12 st uh, students, even like designed by grades. But as an ESOS uh, instructor, we cannot find uh, sources that specifically for multilingual visitors. Um, so this is uh, why I presenting here. Um, so we will move on. Um, so my uh, pre-activity is actually can answer my dissertation topics, where they come from. Um, so my doctoral uh, program is kind of like the practice oriented. Um, so instead of just to have one core research question, we're allowed to design the series um, of research questions within the consistent system. So for me, um, I have uh, four bases. Uh, four uh, phases. The first one is where are adult English language learners and who are they? Uh, second one is adult English language learners' motivations for visiting science museums, because uh, my team is more uh, pray for the science community, uh, the, 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 the science museums and science centers. Um, so, we, so I just uh, put my research setting in the science museums. And the third one is, um, are there any gaps between their demand and what museums have offered. As a develop as, as a development um, research question, I want to um, investigate like there are any possibilities that engage this opportunity to the science museums. Um, I will share my findings so far. Um, so there is a one organization named Association of Science and Technology Center, which is a ASTC. It gathered uh, 300, uh, 340 science centers in the US. Um, I just searched about 50 science centers and museums from, from them. Um, but I found that none of them share educational sources specifically for adult English language learners. However, four of them do offer the sources in the Spanish version. And uh, six of them offer either field trips or educational sources to adults, colleges, and teens. So uh, which make me feel that they do have these uh, science centers, they do have some awareness of engaging with multilingual learners. However, they just haven't broadened the population to all English language learners speaking diverse native languages. For example, um, I just assume I haven't had the uh, data yet, but just based on the conversations between uh, museum educators, because um, few of them have the background, have the TESO background. They just feel, they just take it for granted, like uh, including the sources with Spanish version. Um, they, they just thought it is um, like uh, what they need to do, but they just don't think about other like possibilities and um, 
to to connecting the multilingual learners um other than someone who speak spanish and the 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 second realization is i see reasonable possibilities because they have the uh, sources for adults uh colleges and uh teams reasonable possibilities to adapt these sources so that um, they can um, accommodate multilingual learners' English levels. Um, as what my title said, for those adult English language learners, they may know the paleontology in their native language, and they may have the, uh, the actual knowledge for this subject, but the language is kind of like the barrier, uh, barriers to have access to the exhibitions or the content in the museum. And that is why my, uh, res uh, my research topics going like the uh, system way, like from where they are to the possibilities that engage this community to science museums. So I can like build the background for the science field educators and then convince them to connect this community with the science. So before we move to the Next activity, I I want to quote these two sentences. I, I, I want to read these two quotations very quickly. The first one is from the uh, J. Paul Getty Museum. Um, they said, today museum professionals are challenged to engage communities that are increasingly diverse and immigrant based. And the second one is 96 of students' engagement with museum educators has consisted, uh, has consisted of a, a facilitator light discussion in English, an activity that is less accessible when language is a barrier. So based on this um, thought, I created one uh, simple evaluation activity. So I selected two museums that are not from the science subject, but one is from the uh, history and another one from the art. Um, so either one of them, they prepare the um, sources, especially for the adult English language learners. So my logic is um, we will learn how museums with other subjects have done so far for the adult English language learners and then move to my field, the science museum, like how we can uh, develop and modify in that field. So I will have a link, send the link to the chat and that you can have the link for the each museum. And I would ask Allison to help me break you guys to two groups and the group one the group one will take the British Museum as an example to evaluate the group two will take the Getty Museum uh, as an example to evaluate. Um, each group takes two to four minutes to review the uh, web, web page. You can review it um, individually or with a group and take about five or six minutes to discuss in the group and uh, put your answers to uh, Padlet and we will be back in the main room and take about eight minutes to do the discussion. Um, 
So the rooms are all set up, Cindy, and I will drop the Padlet, everyone, okay. so to post your answers. Okay. I will send the British link to you and um, that you can send them to each, each, each room. Yep, we're getting that now, Jennifer. So whenever you're ready, uh, Cindy, if you could uh, put in the chat the museums. Okay. So you can already take a look at the Padlet, see what questions we have. All right, so I'm going to put you guys in breakout rooms now that we have all the, um, the links now in three, two, one. All right, they're moving to breakout rooms. I'm also, Cindy, going to post it in, um, I'm going to broadcast mm -hmm. the links again for everyone. Thank you. I have uh, 20 more minutes, right? Yep, just about 22. <gasps> All right, Carol and Jacqueline, I've put you guys in breakout groups. If you want to join either with your, um, you know, with your mic or not with your mic, with chat, you should get a message that says you have a room open. There we go. So we should have all the links now. Yeah, you're right, Jacqueline. There's a there's a bad storm where I am now. I'm worried. <laughs> I'm a little worried about electricity, but so far so good. Alison, is it possible that I uh, uh, walk around like each break breakup rooms? Um, I I'm not sure if you can as a co-host, but I can move you, um, and I'll send you a message before I'm moving you. <laughs> All right, so I'll I'll move you to room one first. Okay, you should get a message now. And uh, you will bring us back together after time, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, I didn't receive the message. Really, it says that 
you're I moved you and it says you're not joined. Um, but you might be able to move around as a co-host. If you go to the bottom of Zoom and you see more, it has uh, breakout rooms and you might be able to go from there. Okay. Is it because I am I'm, I'm sharing the screen? Because even though I click the break rooms, I still cannot get in. Hmm. Well, that's very strange. Um, let me try moving you to two. No, it says, at least on Zoom, it says that you've been moved and you're not joined, so. Uh, um, maybe I will try to, oh yeah, because I, I stopped sharing my screen. Oh, and it works, great. Okay, so I'll bring you back in about five, oh, there we go. <laughs> so we'll stop everyone, Jacqueline and um, Carol, and a, a couple more minutes. So it's been about already five, six minutes. We're gonna all come back together here in just a couple minutes. I'm gonna give Cindy uh, a little bit more time with, she's gonna talk with the room one with both breakout rooms.
All right, they should be coming here back, returning in 30 seconds. All right, welcome back everyone. Cindy, everyone should be back now. Here's the Padlet once again. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm, reading, uh, I'm reading the Padlet. Um, we have some thoughts about uh, from the Getty Museum group. Um, they, they wrote that I think the Getty Museum would be great for creative writing and use of vocabulary with emotions. I like the idea of connecting personal experiences. And they also noted that uh, this would be both folks on the language skills and the uh, actual content, um, but more on language skills if you give target vocabulary and essay styles. And because we can like short of time, I will put um, why, why don't we just to put our discussions and thoughts to the next museum that we're gonna discuss. Um, so instead of breaking into two groups, I would like to just um, share my screen and uh, we, we just uh, browse the web page together. So the science, cause my topic, uh, dissertation topic is more focused on the science field and we're um, located as a D DC. So I just uh, I just want to use um, National Museum of Natural History, the, its website to take an example. Um, I will share my screen here. So this is an education page for the NMNH. Um, so if you want to open the web page by your uh, on your own, you can also do that. But I will just uh, share my screen here. So uh, what I want to discuss is after briefly overview this content, um, do you see any possibilities of connecting science knowledge with adult English language learners community? Or um, are there any potentials of modifying current educational sources for uh, visitors with different English levels. So you can contribute your uh, thoughts to either of topics. Uh, we will take two minutes, because we shut up time, uh, two minutes to overview the main page. And I want to highlight that under their menu, they also prepare the um, Spanish. Uh, they also prepare the sources for the Spanish families or families with Spanish um, people. So we can see that they have the school programs and they're divided into the grades very thoroughly, right? from grades K2 to the grade six to 12. 
and also they have the teaching resources and they have the programs for youth and families and adults especially. But as we go into the adult programs, it is very, uh, if you have enough time to look through all the series, it, it is very obvious that the vocabulary and sentence structure are very difficult for English language learners. And their topic are more professional and relatively irrelevant to like daily life or personal lives. So what I want to say is in order to encourage this, popu uh, this population to visit science centers, how do science centers connect, like um, a a attract visitors interest, like a attract them go into the mu uh, science museum? Well, you are- I, I was gonna say most, most science museums, I think, try to attract families because they figured that's, um, you know, more revenue and, mm -hmm. um, you know, they want to, you know, parents need things to do with their kids. So I think that's why, and, and teachers, you know, are always looking for field trips. So I think that's where the two big pushes are. Yeah, so it back to my uh, pre-activity question. Uh, that is, other than the adult English language learners, what are other identities for this population? Because we do see some interactions um, as a um, as a identity for this population. They may be the parents, they may be like family members, and they can be the of course, uh, international students, and they can even be the uh, immigrants, refugees. So um, my idea is just imagine there's a family and their K-12 children that study in the US, they can speak English very frequently, but uh, their parents, their grandparents, they are the uh, immigrants or their first language is not English, but they still won't have the family time. Uh, so they, and, and also enjoyable and educational. So they choose um, science museum to um, have their family time. However, during the visiting, uh, visiting time, we can imagine that those parents or grandparents, those family members, they just cannot, they may cannot join in these activities together with their kids because they cannot understand. Um, so it is why I want to do some research about like what other identities for this population to create more connections with their with the museum current um, communities, like the family groups and the youth groups. Um, I, I received a message from Allison. We may have five more minutes. Um, I will say that um, it is just the, the start for my um, research and um, for myself personally um, and with my literature review so far, I see there exists the very large gap between these two subjects. And I just sincerely invite um, attendees that in my session, if you're interested in my research and if you have um, any thoughts about how I can get such data or about um, perspectives as someone who are in the ESO or TESO field, you're very welcome to get in touch with me 
and um, here is my contact info. Um, yes, so is there any final thoughts towards my dissertation and presentation today? Because we have three more minutes. Yeah, we can open this up for a Q&A with our couple minutes left. Because I feel like I receive more support from TESO fields when I talk with um, museum educators with little TESO fields, they just cannot understand why it is necessary for them to um, develop a new, a brandly new population other than just um, dig in their current population. So I want to learn more from, from folks as TSO field. Yes, yeah, so, oh, I can see that we have someone who are interested in my topic. It looks like none of them are ESOL specific, like you said, and I have I have looked before because I I did life and culture as well that class, um, and it would it would I would always have to create some materials. None of them, mm -hmm. I mean, the materials can be adapted, but um, a lot of it's text heavy. We have a question from Christina in the chat. How would you change the family sources to be more um, appropriate for adult family members? How would ELL materials be different? Um, yes, um, it is what I will work on in my uh, future dissertation, because I would like to uh, develop an engage, uh, either an engagement plan or just a simple sample for the museum educators, how they can start from the easy point. For example, I just um, start with, as Christ, uh, Christina said, um, the adult family members, or uh, for the general multilingual visitors, just to provide the very simple tour guide for them, so that at least when they together with their family members, they won't just be feel lost in the mu museum. Yes, yeah, something like this. All right, it's 2.20. Is there any last question? One last question before we um, wrap my... up? I just wanted to say, changing that, I mean, this is really a, a fascinating topic. And, you know, if you can come out with some really good guidelines for museums to follow and have you know perhaps get them to understand mm -hmm. what um esl uh learners you know english language learners need to really enjoy it, their uh museum experiences could be really helpful thank you so much yeah they need to hire an esl teacher <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, they, thank you, everyone, and um, thank you, Sin Sin uh, and Sin or Cindy. Um, and yeah, we learned a lot. Here's her information. And remember, there's one more session after this, number four today, and then we have the closing ceremony. So the the next live session is at two thirty to three twenty, um, and the closing ceremony is at three thirty to four. So we hope to see you there and. Um, a good day and thank you Simpson. <laughs> thank you guys for attending my session have a good day okay i'm gonna stop recording now